Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about tips, tricks and time management related to this certification. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are continuing ahead with the set C and the chapter 1 of it. Today, we shall be looking forward to the rest of the questions of the chapter 1 and we'll be discussing how we can better handle them. So let's go ahead with the very first question and that's the question number 7. Question number 7, uh, I think that's question number 6. Which of the following statement about different testing roles is most likely to be correct? Now, most likely to be correct certainly goes with the given options because here we don't have the context. So all we have to do is read the options carefully in order to conclude that what could be the possible right statement. So to start with the option A says, uh, in agile software development, the test management role is the primary responsibility of the team, while the testing role is the primarily the responsibility of single individual from outside the team. Again, see, some of the things which we really have to worry about is what we have read in the syllabus, and second, a little bit perception from our real time as well. When we talk about the whole team concept, that is whole team approach, it says that everyone is embedded into the team. That means the designer, developer, and tester. And that's what put together is called as a team. So testing is not done by someone who is outside the team. So that's where this option goes completely wrong. However, the first part is perfectly fine. The overall test management can be distributed among the whole team or responsibility of the whole team because we say in Agile, quality is everyone's responsibility. It's not that the tester is isolated and independent, but rather it's a teamwork to do and make sure that the product achieves the required quality. So in that context, the option A at the end goes wrong because it's not done by a tester, which is outside the team. And that's not something which is correct. It is inside the team. Let's go with option B. Option B says uh, the testing role is primarily responsible for test monitoring and control. Okay, that's possible because testing role uh, performs that. While the test management role is primarily responsible for test planning and test completion. Again, if you see a simple conflict which is happening here is when we talk about the management role, it takes care of everything what is listed here. That is planning, then we have completion, at the same time we have monitoring and control as well. But if you talk about the testing role as per the given definitions uh, in the syllabus, we know our responsibility is analysis, design, implementation and execution. So planning, monitoring, control, all that goes with the test management role. And that's where the option B also is incorrect. Let's go with option C. Option C says here, in agile software development, uh, the test management activities that span multiple teams are handled by the test manager outside the team, while some test management tasks are handled by the team itself. Now that's something which is making a lot of sense because we remember that whole team approach or when we talk about uh, agile team working together, we do not embed the project managers or the test managers into the team. When we say there's a scrum team, we only talk about the people who are responsible to implement the system like designer, developer and tester as per the definitions. Of course, many people may think that in my organization, we say PM is also a member or something like that. But trust me, that's not the definition. Okay, the definition said the people who will be implementing the product are only the member of team, uh, inclusive of developer, designer and tester. So in that context, it makes perfect sense because a test manager is someone who will be guiding the team, but will be outside the team, not inside the team. Okay, so let's not get carried away because at this point by after after reading option a and b it's very easy to get diverted and say hey why test manager is outside the team and that would also be picked up as wrong option but somehow this option looks right at this point of time let's go with d before we conclude on that so d says the test management role is primarily responsible for test analysis and test design while testing role is primarily responsible for test implementation and execution. I think this option is completely uh, right opposite to that of option B. If you remember in option B, we clearly read that the test management role is someone who is taking care of all that. And this is just opposite to that. When we talk about the test management role, again, is talking about those activities which are responsibility of a testing role. 
So I think that would make a perfect sense and to the point that this is also one of the wrong options. So in that context, putting up all together, the right answer for this particular question is C, that is in agile software development, test management activities that span single or multiple teams are handled by the test manager outside the team, while some test management tasks are handled by the team itself, which includes things like analysis, design, and executions, right? So that's how we should be very, very patient in terms of concluding with our dedicated right answer. Let's move on to the next one. And the next question we have is question number eight. And the question number eight says, uh, sorry, question number seven, which of the following is an advantage of whole team approach? I think this is supposed to be kept very, very straightforward because we know what is whole team approach. In fact, a little bit we discussed as a part of the previous question also, and we just wanted to uh, have a very straightforward answer to this. However, there are four options given to us. So let's see if there are any tricks and tips involved there as well. Uh, the options are A, team with no tester. Of course, that's not something relevant. Improve team, team dynamics, that makes sense. Specialist team members, that also makes sense. And larger team size. No, that's not about what is whole team approach. In whole team approach, we look forward to have a smaller team, especially when we talk about the scrum team concept. We say that we just have a limited number of smaller uh, set of people, which takes the overall responsibility on the product implementation. Now, we're just left with option B and C, where we say improved team dynamics and specialist team members. Now, that's a little tricky because uh, sometimes what happens, we do see both of them as uh, one of the element. But when we talk about this option C, the whole team approach allows any team member with the requisite skills, which are like more of the knowledge, what they have to have in order to implement something. And at the same time, specialist team members are not one of the advantages because we say uh, agile team hires the people who are you know, ready and kind of motivated on their own in order to do that job. So we hire the people who have the skill. So specialist as a keyword is not something which is relevant to include here. However, at the ground level, we can make such statements that, hey, we are a development specialist or testing specialist that okay that's okay but point is being uh, there are certain prerequisites which we need to have in a team member and as far as we are uh, done with that having someone specialist into that domain is being considered as more of like uh, someone which is highly experienced like 15 years 20 years and that is where we are referring to specialist so that is where i don't want you to conflict with your basic annotation of people and jobs in the organization so it's not about the specialist here okay so in that context put together the right answer for this particular question is B, that is improved team dynamics, which would make more sense to be the right answer for this particular whole team approach, which certainly helps to uh, let the people work together, have better communications, and certainly uh, achieve the goals when working together without any kind of differentiation, right? So let's move on to the next question. And the next question, of course, uh, is question number eight. Uh, which of the following statement about the independence of testing is correct? Again, we know about this uh, from our previous discussions. Independence of testing simply means that having independent testers and having the benefits and drawbacks of that into our account, we should read the options. So option A here says uh, independent testers will find defects due to their different technical perspective from developers. Great. But their independence may lead to an adversarial relationship with the developers. This is completely a good combination of the benefit and the drawback of having independent tester in the organization. Because at the same time, we have a benefit, plus having an independent tester, we may have some kind of adversarial relationship because they are working independently from each other. They're not working in a team. So that's uh, really the benefit and the drawback in one option given to you. Let's check out the other options. Option B says uh, developers familiarity with their own code means they only find few defects in it. However, their shared software background with testers means these defects would also be found by testers. Now, there are a lot of conflicting keyword. If you sit down and uh, read this statement word by word, you would understand two or three catchy words here. Number one, that why developer would lead only into fewer defects of identification. We are not uh, here to claim that developers are not good at finding defects. And testing nowhere defines this. 
Okay, testing at any point does not define that the testers are incapable, developers are incapable of finding a defect. So using the word fewer is not measurable and not a kind of like determined at any point of time that how can you say what is fewer standing for. Sometimes developers are capable of finding all their mistakes. So there's no such determination. The second important point, if you continue further, you would find that uh, uh, having the shared software background with testers means these defects would also be found by the testers. Fine, that's absolutely okay. But this is nowhere related to the benefit and drawback of the independent testing. Of course, a tester can also find what the developers can find, but they can be different in their nature to find different defects, that's okay. But this option nowhere talks about what is the benefit of having independent testing and what is the drawback of it, right? So that's where it does not fulfill with respect to that of option A. So let's go to option C. Option C says, independent testing requires testers who are outside the developer's team and ideally from outside the organization. However, these testers find it difficult to understand the application domain. It's again not necessary that if you are outsourcing the testers, which is highly independent, which is also a degree of independence in testing, does not mean that they don't know what is the product all about. Okay, it's completely that you hire the outside team only for a reason they are doing better than what you could have done, right? And so you have contacted an organization who is very much specialist in their job or very much aware of that particular domain. And that's the reason you reached out to them instead of doing testing internally. So I think that would be right conflicting with what we are looking at. But however, yes, independent test team might be having lack of collaboration or lack of communication, but it does not mean that they don't know what the uh, application domain is, right? Uh, if it is so, then why would you reach out to them? So that's not the right answer. Again, let's go to option D. Option D says uh, testers from outside the developer's team are more independent than testers uh, from within the team, but the testers from within the team are more likely to be blamed for delays in product release. I think blame for delay in the product release is equivalent to anyone. If the testing is done internally or testing is done externally, if they miss the deadline, they will be blamed for it. If uh, internal team missed the deadline, they will be blamed for the delay. So it's not that if testers are outside, they will not be blamed. Testers are inside, they'll be blamed or vice versa. It's just that if testing delays it, only if, testing delays the release, then testing team will be blamed for it, right? So that's again, not one of the relevant option which we can talk about. So in that context put together, the right answer for this particular question is A, that is independent testers will find different defects due to their different technical perspective from developers, but their independence may lead to an adversarial relationship with the developers, which is one of the common benefit and at the same time, one of the common drawback, which we may expect from this independence of testing. I think uh, we just tried investing our time wherever it is relevant to give you context and clarity so that you can always make that judgment during the examination that what would be the right answer. And that's the reason we are investing our effort in every single question, just the way we are doing it for the first time. Okay, so anyways, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.